Property-based testing is a testing method designed to test your code without you needing to provide a fixed set of inputs and expected outputs, as you would in unit tests. Instead, you make assertions about certain properties of the output that depend on the input. For example, if you wrote a function that sorts a list, you could test that the output list is always the same length as the input, regardless of the input itself. Hypothesis is a Python package that facilitates property-based testing and allows you to fuzz your input. Given the sorting example, Hypothesis could randomly generate hundreds of lists with different lengths and data types and assert that the lengths of the input and output lists are equal, all without you having to write a single test case. It's also great for testing that you can serialize or deserialize a certain format, or for checking that a new implementation of a function will always match an old one. With that in mind, let's get started with some property-based testing. First, you're going to want to install Hypothesis and PyTest with pip, like so. Then, in your testing files, you can import the given decorator from Hypothesis. It's called given after a testing pattern called given when then, which is a structured way of writing test cases. I'll leave some more resources in the description below. Here we have a simple test case that ensures if you serialize and deserialize some JSON, you always get the same value out as you put in. We can use the given decorator here, and in order to tell Hypothesis what data type we want to test with, we use a strategy. I'm going to import hypothesis.strategies as st here, and use the text strategy to randomly generate strings to test against. This will pass a variable to our test function, which I'm just going to call s for string. Now we can run pytest and see that the test passes. If you want to check what hypothesis is doing, you can run pytest with the hypothesis show statistics flag to see some stats, like how many inputs hypothesis is testing with. Let's move on to something a bit more real world, shall we? Let's pretend we're setting up an email service like Gmail. I have a pydantic model here that represents a mailbox, which we can insert into our database. Unfortunately, we're trying to save on storage, so our database can only handle strings up to 26 characters long in the email address field. I've also got this function create mailbox, which takes in a username, checks that it contains only letters, creates an email address, inserts into the DB, and finally returns the new mailbox object. If I run the tests for this, you can see that I can create Isaac at coolemailservice.com just fine. Let's try implementing some fuzzy tests with Hypothesis. Like before, I can specify that we want to test with some text. However, Hypothesis will use any valid UTF-8 string as an argument including ones with non-alphanumeric characters. Since we already know that these will fail the test, we can specify an alphabet to choose from, and we can use Python's built-in string.ascii lowercase constant for this. We can now run the test and, oh no, it's failing. You can see that Hypothesis is showing us the failing test case too, which is nice. In this case, it's the empty string, because we've specified that we must match that regex pattern from earlier. To avoid this, we can set the min size property of the text strategy to one, as having it less than this will fail our test, and we can test the failing cases later. We can run this again and it should pass now. Oh dear, we're failing again. This time it looks like we hit a pedantic validation error because our string is too long. It looks like we forgot to check that our whole email address can fit into our database. We have a maximum of 26 characters and at coolemailservice.com takes up 21 already. We really need to buy a new domain name. But for now, let's just check that the username is five characters or less and set our max size in hypothesis to five. Now, finally, our test is passing. Thanks Thankfully, Hypothesis keeps track of which test cases failed and makes sure to use those again on the next run, making it really easy to ensure that you've actually fixed a bug. As I mentioned earlier, we still want to test the failure cases. Well, for that, we can use the normal raises context manager from PyTest to make sure we're getting a value error when an invalid username is used. Let's first do this to check for the email address being too long, and now we can use another hypothesis strategy to create email addresses that should fail our regex validation. By using the character strategy, strategy as our alphabet parameter in the text strategy, we can blacklist all ASCII letters, meaning our strings will contain anything except valid characters, and should therefore always fail, even when using the correct length. Finally, for completeness, let's check that the empty username case is still failing. Running our tests now, we can see that everything is passing again. Thanks to hypothesis and property-based testing, we were able to fix bugs we might otherwise have missed, and though this was a trivial case, we can make our tests as complex as we like using composite strategies. I'd like to return to our JSON round trip test from earlier. Testing serializing and deserializing data in this way is good, but for JSON the test is severely limited, as the JSON standard supports more than just strings. Thankfully, we can use the composite strategy decorator to define our own strategy. We can define a strategy using the draw method which gets passed into the function, which will draw a value from the strategy you pass in as an argument. In our case, we have a list of strategies that could be represented as JSON. We then select a random one, draw from it, then return the result. We're even recursive 
recursively calling the function to generate lists and dictionaries of JSON serializable data types. Now we have a JSON serializable strategy that we can use for testing any JSON functions. It's worth noting that you could also use the st.oneof and st.recursive strategies to avoid implementing this ourselves, but I wanted to show off the composite strategy. If we use it on our round trip test here, we should see that everything still passes. We can also print s and run pytest with the dash s flag to show standard output to see what hypothesis is generating for us. Mmm, beautiful. Finally, I want to draw attention to one of my favorite features of hypothesis, automatic test generation. By installing the hypothesis CLI with the following command, we can run hypothesis write mail service dot mailbox to generate tests for our mailbox object, which we can then write to a new test file. Unfortunately, since I'm using Pydantic, I'm going to have to manually change this constrained string value type hint to string, but otherwise this looks pretty good. The tests fail because we haven't implemented the checks we did earlier, but they're a good starting point for writing your own property-based tests. And you can see that Hypothesis has automatically picked up on our max size for our email address field. As you've hopefully seen, property-based testing is an incredible tool for your Python testing toolkit. It can help you uncover bugs you never would have thought of otherwise, and allows you to test your functions with a wide variety of data without having to write a bajillion test cases yourself. On the other hand, it does make your tests we take longer to run, so I wouldn't start using them everywhere. I found they work best when you need to do substantial data validation or for testing end-to-end -end, rather than just unit testing individual functions. If you've enjoyed this video, you might enjoy this one where I talk about the strategy pattern, a programming pattern that can make it really easy to use property-based testing in your code base.